All right, so we got White Sanquinius is an absolute beast in the Warhammer 40 <laughs> Warhammer 40k. It's a good video. Hey guys and gal, everyone is equal. Some are just more equal than others. Oh no, we're the not. The same rings true for the Primarchs. In theory, each Primarch was made with the same potential and capacity for greatness. The really? Emperor didn't like wank extra hard into one tube compared to another. As far as I'm aware, I wasn't there when he did it. However, theory True. rarely matches reality. As we can clearly see that no, the Primarchs are not all equal in power, magnificence, and potential. Put Lord- Obviously, the Salamander's Primarch is way better than everybody else besides the Emperor. I just had to say that. Uh, and Vulcan in a boxing ring and watch <sighs> that uppity little priest get some BBC. However, above all of his brothers, even the Lion and Horus stand Sanguinius. A near perfect being with unbreakable will, infinite tenacity, and an extremely impressive body. I heard a lot of good things about Sanguinius, I'm gonna be honest with you. He was a league above the rest of his brothers, only Horus matching him, and that was because Horus had received like 500 tons of warp trend injected yeah. straight into his scrotum. Before we get started, Dang, Christmas man, I, I is nearly here, and now is the time to buy this for yourself or friends and family. So why not get them some major kill Christmas merch? Okay. I've been brainstorming this drop for months. I do this at Avery. Listen, be I'm beyond with listen. Out. I heard so First, many good things about St. Quinius on how hard he is, especially, bro. This man, Magic Kill, has been legit glazing St. Quinius. Bro, he mentions him in every single Warhammer video, bro. I'm pretty sure, bro. I, I know St. Quinius more than I know some of the uh, some of the side manners, like some of the irrelevant side manners that just sit on the sidelines all day. But at the end of the day, I did hear a lot of great things about St. Quinius, most likely in his 12 minutes video we're gonna hear a lot of good, uh, good things as well says, um i want to see how, how truly Unlike good he is any other um and, and so yeah you know, I most likely magic is gonna break it down for us and stuff like that but again he's not better than anybody on the sound man is true besides the people who don't train and stuff like that but you know i get rid of those people because obviously if you don't know i actually own a five percent stake in the sound man is true i don't want to say that but um of that it's great back to the video i think he's still doing that the ad read so is the stock is limited so get it now and you'll have it in time for chrissy Today we'll go over the might of Sanguinius, focusing more so on his highlights and feats of power rather than just retelling his lore. I'll also do my best to explain why he's a league above his brothers since he theoretically should be equal to them. Besides the Salamander, the Salamander Primarch. Artist just for this video. It shows off arguably Sanguinius's most badass moment from the lore. Artist has asked to remain anonymous, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy it ourselves. Uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it! There are two things I want to address before we delve into Sangi's in-law highlights. The first is the people who dislike Sanguinius because they see him as this infallible Mary Sue who is able to beat everyone and do everything and everyone loves him. And I get that if you don't know shit about the actual lore. Sure, on the surface, Sanguinius was a universally admired warrior who always seemed to have the best takes and be perfect. But the dude had serious anger management issues to a point where Korn actually wanted Sanguinius over Angron. Crash out material, I'm gonna be honest with you. All great Primarchs are crash outs. I'll admit that. They are crash outs. I mean, it is what it is. Okay. I'll accept that. I mean, you know what? He might be top three. Legion also had the red thirst. He might be top three. Sons really wanted to rip open their allies and enemies alike and drink their blood and eat their flesh. Sanguinius was one of the only Primarchs, alongside Magnus, that had to murder his own sons due to their gene flaw. He was also deeply insecure about his soul and morals. He wanted to be good, but felt a darkness within him. He actually despised his wings at times, as he saw them as signs of mutation and corruption. So him being perfect and trying his best was his attempt at overcoming an inner darkness that threatened to turn him into an avatar of death and destruction. A very nuanced, flawed character when you go deeper than face value. The second thing I want to address is why Sanguinius ended up being so powerful compared to his brothers. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marks had obscene potential. Some just never reached it as they fought against their own nature. Oh. Corvus Corax embraced his okay, that makes power sense. and can now shapeshift into a demonic raven demigod monster that was able to easily kick the living shit out of a demon prince. So basically like the level of competition basically is that what it is level competition Gilliman totally embraced his commanding and logistical skills, allowing him to run and greatly improve the Imperium, doing the job of five Primarchs at once during his Indominatus Crusade. 
Other Primarchs, like Angron, had their purpose twisted and were not able to grow. All the Primarchs who became demons have lost their ability to reach their full potential, instead side-grading to become a pretty one-dimensional raid boss. Sanguinius completely and utterly embraced what he was during the Siege of Terra. No more doubt, no more restraint, no more insecurity. He became the angel of death he was born to be, using his foresight, flight and unleashed power to become a god of war, literally saving the loyalist forces almost single-handedly. His embrace of this power is why he ascended beyond <sighs> his brothers. Another bro, he gotta get that much credit. All right, we'll give it to him. Reason, which is a bit more on the theory side of things, is that instead of the emperor putting one warp god into Sanguinius like he did with the other Primarchs, he actually put in two, both the Angel of Light and Darkness. Two? It's That's not fair. Implied that the emperor created the Primarchs by taking minor gods from the warp and putting them into these vessels he had created. This would explain why the Primarchs are so diverse and volatile. Wait, is that true? Wait, it, wait, whoa. Yo, so what, yo, 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 Emperor, you gonna leave the Salamander? Yo, how come he's not? Yo. How is that fair, though? After all, wouldn't the Emperor want to make 20 Gillimans or Rogals if he could? It's already confirmed that the gods of Baal that are tied directly to the Blood Angels are two angels locked in combat. This perfectly mirrors Sanguinius, who had his light I'm and gonna be honest with you, that's not fair. Over him. Perhaps having these two gods within him is what elevated him above his monogod brothers. Duh. Duh, he- Bro, there's two gods inside of one- of, of, Duh, of course. Although the side effects include the intense gene flaws within his sons. That's just the theory, but a pretty fucking good one if you ask me. Okay, so now we have some context as to why he was a league above the rest, let's look at some of the bonkers shit our glorious hawk boy did. I'll try to get these in order, but fuck it. Shit is so hyped that I'll be slapping down whatever hits my brain first. Sanguinius was a beast during the Great Crusade. Constant victories, zero losses, his ability to fly straight into the heart of the enemy and wreck some tits was OP as hell. However, it was during the Horus Heresy that Sanguinius rose above his brothers. First was during the Battle of Cygnus Prime, where the now bulgy hardest Chaos Horus sent Sanguinius to a demon world to die. Horus did this as he was scared to face Sanguinius and his blood angels in battle, so he wanted to get them wiped out in a demonic ambush. On that planet, Sanguinius fought and lost the Kabunda, widely considered to be the greatest demon of corn. Hey, 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 oh, hold on. I, I gotta say my mic is on real quick. Um, bro, hey, the Salamanders, uh, the Salamanders Primarch would never lose. I'm just keeping it honest with you. That's crazy. He would never lose to the greatest demon of all time. Come on, bro. You know who the Salamanders are? However, <laughs> get real. Broken leg, Sanguinius came back for round two, fucked Kabunda's shit up, then proceeded to beat a greater demon of Slanesh to death as well, because, you know, why not? It's not just demons that Sanguinius has clapped. Sanguinius once faced down an Eldar Warlock Titan, the most powerful Eldar Titan there is and he ripped its fucking head off with his bare hands. The Titan was able to shoot Sanguinius with a Titan Psychic Lance, a shot that is basically a guaranteed one-hit kill on anything. Sanguinius just kind of walked it off. Not to stop there, one of Sanguinius's most badass scenes is him preparing to jump out of a ship to 1v1 an Emperor-class Titan, the largest and greatest Titan in the galaxy. His first captain is like, holy fuck dad, no, you are only worth like 500 points at most. The Emperor class Titan would be 10,000 points plus. And Sanguinius looked his son in the eye and said, hold my fucking beer before jumping out of the ship and literally 1v1ing an Emperor class Titan. As he did so, it said his size grew to encompass the heavens. The traders saw him as an avatar of their death and destruction. All who looked upon him instantly regretted their life decisions and accepted that today is likely the day that they would die. Bro, how is that fair though? Like, uh, that's not fair, bro. How come he gets to have two gods in one, bro, but we can't have one, bro? How is that fair? Yo, Emperor, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Bro, you're exiled, bro. You're not in my top five no more. How, bro, how, bro, for real? Die. It was very badass. The reason why Sanguinius happily took on a titan that theoretically should dumpster him, after all a mere warhound titan nearly killed both Lorgar and Angron, is because of his foresight. He knew he wasn't going to die that day, so it didn't matter how much danger he put himself in. He was like Neo from the Matrix, beginning to believe. You know how I said that Sanguinius had some serious anger management issues? Well, no other instance shows this off quite like Sanguinius' fight against the legendary demon Medial, a demon of chaos undivided, which is already very rare. This demon had been able to hold off Gilliman and the lion. Medial had also killed billions, 
twisted Sanguinis' thoughts and emotions and lured Sanguinis into a trap. Surrounded by demons, pinned Billions? and with no hope, Sanguinius cracked the mother of all shits. He went full berserker mode from Goblin Slayer, literally gaining glowing red eyes and setting himself on holy fire. Even just powering up destroyed most of the demons around him, before he then jumped on Medile's ass and beat the shit out of the demon lord. This was arguably the strongest demon in the entire heresy, and our boy went to fucking town. The thing about Sanguinius is due to his inner darkness and insecurity, he was actually really vulnerable to corruption almost falling to chaos on Cygnus Prime as Chaos exploited his desire to save his sons from their own gene flaws. Time and time again they would show him false visions, empty promises and all kinds of mindfuck. Instead of becoming more doubtful and insecure, Sanguinius learned from these and continually grew from each attack on his soul. Honestly, if the demons had never tried to corrupt Sanguinius, he wouldn't have become this absolute juggernaut. Pressure makes diamonds and Sanguinius is the chief example of this. Having torn his way across the galaxy and reaching Terra in time for its defense, Sanguinius' most legendary moments would become immortalized in the annals of history. See, he hadn't really fought against his traitor Primarch brothers much during the heresy. They avoided him like the plague, with even con Conrad not wanting to fight him when they encountered each other. He had kicked massive amounts of Titan and demonic ass, but the real test comes from Primarch vs Primarch battles. During the Siege of Terra, as the palace's defences began to crumble, Sanguinius flew to and stood in front of the Eternity Gate, the last line of defence before the traitors would reach the Emperor sitting on his golden throne and- Bro, listen, it's just not fair bro, like how bro, bro? Out of all people, listen, I know I'm whining, bro, but out of all people, let's just keep it real, bro. One of the Silent Man, bro, the Silent Man is primary, deserves it, bro. I know he think he perfect with his wings and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, bro, you really not like, bro, bro, bro. You put him against, uh, uh, against the Silent Man as primary, bro. Who's really winning, bro? In the heresy. Against all odds, Sanguinius stood at that gate and held his fucking ground. Millions of demons, traitor Astartes, and heretics charged, and millions died. Kabunda, the legendary greater demon who had beaten Sanguinius before, charged forth, and Sanguinius massacred him. Then mere moments later, like an unholy comet that destroyed the dinosaurs, Angron soared from the sky, screaming his challenge to Sanguinius. Sanguinius met his demonic brother in combat, and the two were locked in a fight to the death. At this point, Angron was so juiced up on power that he was considered the greatest asset the Trader Legions had. His kill count was in the millions. He was also unkillable, literally regenerating from any wound. He even got shot by a million rockets at once and was completely atomized, only to quickly regenerate from it. So as the brothers fought, every mortal blow that Sanguinius landed would heal. Heart shots, head shots, nothing was working. All the while, Sanguinius was being wounded and worn down, not recovering fast enough. Eventually, Sanguinius Sanguinius was like, no more Mr. Nice Guy, and he allowed Angron to impale him with his sword, bringing Sanguinius close enough to rip Angron's fucking butcher's nails out, momentarily making Angron lucid and sane, before the agony kicked in and the demon was banished back to hell. A wounded but very victorious Sanguinius limped on, having just back to back beaten two of Chaos's greatest champions. He's, he's smart, Sanguinius he's smart like that? He's smart? Last. Wounded, exhausted with damaged gear, he would face down a fresh, heavily empowered Horus, who according to current lore, would go on to kill the angel. There is, however, a fan theory which I love, that says that in reality, Sanguinius would fall to the Black Rage while fighting Horus, triggering his own sons to do so as well. This would result in Sanguinius killing Horus and then mortally wounding the reluctant Emperor, who did not want to kill Sangi. Realizing that if the Black Rage Sanguinius was seen by the Imperium as the one who dealt the Emperor his mortal blow, this would destroy the Imperium. Hence the Emperor kills Sanguinius, then obliterates Horus's soul so that the Chaos Gods wouldn't know the truth of what happened. This fills in a number of plot holes, such as why the Emperor let the obviously super evil Horus beat the shit out of him. It also adds a tragic unexpected twist, while at the same time cementing Sanguinius' place as the most powerful Primarch to ever live. We haven't gotten to the final Siege of Terror book yet, which will detail the fight between Sanguinius and Horus, so until we get it, all we can do is circle jerk over how much of a beast Sanguinius is. If you enjoy the video, uh, he's not the best. He's not the best. The Silent Man's Primark is the best. Th this this was a whole uh Sanquinius Glaze. Um he's cool and all um, cool wings or whatever. Um but the Silent Man and Primark will literally do the same thing. Uh don't try to prove me wrong. I'm a thousand percent right. Comment down below. What do y'all think about this video? In this video, I told y'all, man. This man bro, Major Kill, bro, he's gonna glaze, glaze, glaze the uh Sanquinius. It is what it is, man.
Comment down below. It listen, am I hating right now? I am hating. Because bro, because the Simon is the Simon is probably could do the same thing, bro. But that's just in my opinion, man. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, enjoy the video. I'm a little sick. I'm a little sick from this. I'm gonna be honest. yo, yo, I want yo, major kill. I want a full video of you glazing the salamanders. Do you understand me, bro? I want a full video of that, bro. And if there is a video out there of him glazing the salamanders, I want it. See you guys later for the next one. I'm out. Indeed.